Hi and welcome to this video on working with drums in the Yamaha Modi X. In an earlier video I looked at how to use the drums on the Modi X in a DOR environment, editing or swapping drum sounds over, so you might want to check out that video before watching this one as it gives you more of an overview about drums on the Modi X. This video will concentrate on creating your own drum kits from scratch and then on how to import your own drum samples into the Modi X. So let's start off by initializing a performance. I'll go to Category Search, select Init on the right hand side for Initialize, and we want to select Initialize Drums. Hit the Enter button, and we're ready to get started. On the Initialized patch, each key has a snare drum assigned to it. So we need to go in and edit it to our liking. So let's select the Edit button, and along the bottom we see the layout we saw in the other um, video, bass drum, snare drum, etc. It's a good idea to stick to this layout because it is to the MIDI standard and you'll find that uh, drum kits translate well from one to another if you want to experiment, say, with the same rhythm in, on different drum kits. If you stick to this layout, for the, certainly for these eight major sounds, you can't go far wrong. So let's begin by selecting a bass drum. We'll go to the oscillator section, and if we select the waveforms up here, these are the internal waveforms inside the Modi X. Uh, we want to go for a category search, and let's go for, this will help to narrow it down, and if we go to the kick section, we'll see the kick drums laid out for us in a, in a grid. So let's press that key, and there's bass drum snap. So let's imagine we're happy with that, we'll hit enter. And to go to the snare drum, we'll already have a snare drum selected, it's telling us it's key D1. So if we hit D1, we're, here, we're going to hear that sound now, and we can scroll through the uh, snares, either just using the scroll wheel and go through the various sounds, so let's imagine that's the one we were, we were happy with, and then we can go through and build the kit up in that manner. We still have the editing facilities that we uh, looked at in the early video, we can tune that snare drum up or down. And uh, we've got the filtering, the EQ, and the pan. But uh, let's imagine that now we want to create a drum kit from our own samples. Let's have a look at how we do that. Before you start to import your own sounds, you will need a formatted USB stick, which you can format on the Modi X. In fact, that's the recommended method. Uh, then simply insert it into your computer and drag and drop samples across to the USB stick that you want to import. Now it supports WAV and AIFF samples, uh, but you do need to be a bit organised in your approach, and I'll show you later why that's quite important to do that. So in order to import our own waveform, let's select the first one, which is going to be the bass drum, and we'll click on New Waveform. Now you'll see that it, uh, it takes us to the utility mode, and you can see it's a selected audio file, and it's taken us to the USB stick that I've previously labelled Modi X, and you'll see there's a folder called XIXR10, and I also imported a large stereo crash symbol. So it's a good idea to keep your samples mono, because then you can uh, pan them easily left and right. If you're importing stereo samples, uh, obviously when you, if you've got a stereo sample and you pan it, say, to the right, all you're really doing is, is reducing the volume of the left hand signal. Um, you, it's, so it's a sort of a pseudo pan. If you keep everything mono, you can pan everything in position, then apply your own effects, etc. However, you may have certain sounds that you've applied, say, a massive stereo reverb to, um, say, a, or clap samples that work really well in, sam in uh, stereo. Uh, obviously, import those in uh, stereo samples. Uh, but for now, these are all mono samples, so I'm going to click on the Akai XR10 folder, and we're going to load up the first one. It's they, they're stored in either alphabetical order or size. So I'm going to select, leave it set to uh, name because it's much uh, more straightforward, and select Akai bass drum number one, uh, which is being loaded in now. And when we play key C1, there it is. Now that wasn't actually the one I had in mind, so uh, let's um, click on new waveform again, and select bass drum number two. Right, that was the one I had in mind. Now let's go in and uh, do the same thing for the snare drum. So I'll select New Waveform, and the snare drums, it'll be 
uh, under S for snare drum, so that's going to be towards the end of the list. So here they are, snare drum number one. Let's try that one. So when I press a D, snare drum number one. Now that wasn't uh, the one I wanted either. So let's go to new waveform and select snare drum number two. Right, so now let's uh, go through and do the other sounds. I'll fast forward everything because you don't want to watch me doing that uh, several times. But there was a reason why I loaded up two bass drum sounds and two snare drum sounds, and I'll show you that in a moment. And we're back. So now I've selected all the sounds that are listed on the bottom of the screen. Obviously, you can keep on going, as I showed you before, if you want to sound, assign a sound to, or a sample rather, to a different key, simply go to keyboard select, hit the key that you want to, let's go to C4. So I hit that and then import the waveform that you want to in exactly the same manner as you did, rather than selecting them down here to the, the preset ones, which is a good idea, as I said, to stick to. Um, feel free for the other ones to load up whatever samples you want in virtually any position. And then at least, you know, you kick your snares and your hats will, will match other drum patterns. Right, so the first thing I'd like to show you, I'll switch that off now, is to is this little box here, Receive Note Off. Uh, now why this is important, if you have a listen to the snare drum sound, and the reason I chose, one of the reasons why I chose the, the longer snare drum sound, is that that's, that's the length of the sample. If I just tap the note of D, which is the note assigned to it, you'll hear that it cuts off the sample. So if we sw switch Receive Note off into the off position, what that means is that it's going to ignore when you release the key and play the whole sample regardless. So now if I just tap the key, it'll still play the whole of the sample. Now nine times out of ten, that's that's what you're going to want. So let's go through, do the same thing for the bass drum and the hi-hat pedal, the open, the low tom, the high tom, and the crash. The next thing that you will uh, probably notice is that a drummer, a traditional drummer, would not play an open hi-hat and a closed hi-hat at the same time. It's physically impossible. So what you want to do, ideally, is cut off um, the open hi-hat sound whenever a closed hi-hat is, is, uh, is triggered. So let's show you what it sounds like without that. So here's the open hi-hat. And when you press the close, you'd expect it to cut it off. But it, it doesn't do that. So what you need to do is assign the closed hi-hat to the same group as the open hi-hat. So if I now select uh, the value of 1 into group for the uh, hi-hat closed and assign the value of 1 for the hi-hat open, what that means is that... Uh, The closed hi-hat will close the open hi-hat just as a drummer would do when he was playing it. And you'll find this sounds far more natural when you come to uh, play it back on uh, preset patterns or other patterns that you've imported. The next thing to look at is the assign mode. Now, if I select the crash symbol and we uh, play the crash sound, which is set to C sharp. If it's set to single trigger mode, you get what is often called a machine gun effect in the sense that the sample is cut off and triggered, re-triggered. But if you assign it to multi-mode, it triggers that sample multiple times. It's like assigning polyphony to that particular sample. So it stops it being cut off by itself when you re-trigger that sample. So again, you'll probably want to leave that on multi most of the times. There may be some special effects that you perhaps once, once, perhaps it's a loop or something or a long sample that you want to re-trigger. Then uh, assigning it to single mode will mean that it plays through. And as soon as you press uh, the key, it will re-trigger that uh, sample and cutting off, cut off the original sample. So that, there may be occasions when, you, when you, you want to use single sample mode. One little thing uh, to point out that I've noticed about the EQ uh, settings, if I go to uh, bass drum and I select element EQ, so this is looking at the EQ simply for the bass drum. And if I dial a big uh, boost, you'll notice that uh, it's 
it says it's boosting at 62.5 hertz, but the graphic shows that it's boosting way down to sort of uh, below that value as well. Now, I did actually uh, put an analyzer on it to try, to try and work out what was going on, and it does boost all frequencies below 62.5 hertz or whatever value you have you selected. So if you wanted to make that bass drum have more of a kick, you are actually boosting quite, uh, in my experience, quite dangerous areas uh, below sort of uh, even possibly below 20, 20 hertz. I measured uh, 30 to 35, as I know that is a problem area for lots of speakers and lots of sort of PA systems. And uh, sure enough, a 12 dB boost at 35 hertz was giving me an 11 dB boost on the signal. So uh, be very careful when you're using that. I'd suggest you use uh, EQ inside your door, particularly for the kick drums. This is great to think that each drum sampler has got its own EQ, but just be aware that that's tricky. Now there is another method of, of, uh, of the EQ that you can have a look at, and that's the parametric EQ. And if I uh, dial that up, you might think, well, I can be a bit more precise with the parametric EQ. If I narrow down the Q settings um, and uh, boost a much narrower frequency range of the bass. But uh, the problem with that is it only goes down to 139.7 hertz. I don't know why, but it does. Um, I'm not really, this isn't a gripe because it's fantastic that each drum key does have its own uh, drum sample, has its own EQ settings, but uh, just be aware that it's great for sort of uh, broad strokes, but uh, for surgical work, you might want to use your, uh, record the track separately and use your door to do any, uh, any surgical EQ. Now, one thing I had noticed is that, uh, and this only applies to imported samples, not to samples built into the Modiex, is that if you go to and select the course tune, and uh, so I've got snare drum selected, and I uh, want to re-pitch the snare sound, it disappears for any value other than zero. Now, there is a way around this, but this is a little odd because you can go in and adjust the fine tune and adjust pitch to velocity, but you can't uh, adjust the course pitch. But uh, th the way to do this is to go to Edit Waveform and select a uh, course tune. And that does let you adjust the tuning. I'm not quite sure why it doesn't work on the uh, on the main page, but certainly you can go in and adjust the tuning by the method I've just shown you. One other thing you may want to do is to layer sounds. So let's look at how you do that. So I'm going to layer a uh, clap sound on top of the snare drum. So if I select the snare drum, uh, you can see the uh, waveform is selected up here, and I'm going to select uh, Edit Waveform. And we're going to add a key bank. So here it's expecting another sample. So let's call up the clap. And now it's showing us that there are two key banks assigned to this particular key. And when I press it now, you'll hear that it's layered together the clap and the snare drum. Now I can adjust the volume of, uh, in this case, the clap. If I want to take the snare drum down, I select key bank number one. And then I'm using the uh, rotary dial to, uh, to switch between the key banks and then uh, adjust the level of the snare. So there we are, the claps are becoming more prominent. Now then, there may be occasions as well where you want to load up multiple snares that are triggered, um, or multiple samples, different samples are triggered by different velocities. So how we do that is um, in the velocity limit section. So if we select, if we pick a value, say, of 64, being a middle value for the first uh, key group, uh, let's now go in and select the second key, key bank. And we're going to select that as being the lower limit, as being 64. Now, there is a graphic on the screen. If you look at the two bars at the center here, you'll see uh, where the, the, the two meet. So they should meet at 64. And now when I play the, uh, when I play gently, we'll hear the snare. And when I play hard, we'll hear the clap. So you can set up, obviously, multiple uh, key banks, multiple samples with multiple trigger levels at different velocities. Uh, but this one's... Hopefully I've uh, shown you how to, uh, to toggle between two different samples and also how to layer them together if everything is set to zero to one, two, seven. So what I'll do now is I'll go back and I'll uh, layer those two sounds together. So uh, I'll select now key bank number one and set that 
up to 127. You can actually set the values from your keyboard, so the higher or, or so the softer you uh, strike the keyboard, you set your own velocity levels. But I find it easier just to dial in the values like so. So uh, let's exit from that page. And we've now got the, uh, the layered snare and the clap together. And uh, what I want to show you now is the effects routing. So if you look at the screen, you'll see that each sample has been assigned to insert A. Now there is an insert A and an insert B, so you can choose uh, which of the two insert effects you want to apply to any given sample. But you can also select through, which routes that sample through to the master effects for the whole of the performance. So if you just want to apply a little bit of reverb to every part in the performance, you can do so uh, by selecting through. However, everything defaults to insert A. So let's, for, the, uh, for, for this exercise, put the snare drum, we'll set the snare drum to insert B and leave everything else on insert A, just to uh, illustrate what's going on. If I press the common button, because these are common to all the different uh, samples, you'll see this particular layout. So I'm in the effect setting routing. So, or routing if you're in the States. So we have two insert effects, A and B. And at the moment, they're both set to through. And there's a quite a neat uh, signal flow diagram. So you can see that the signal flows from uh, for this particular key, C1 goes through insert A and then, then into insert B, out of insert B, through the EQ and into the reverb sense. Now, what we can do is there's an easy way to check which sound is, uh, which sample is being routed to which insert, and that's by just literally pressing the keyboard select. And you'll see that the, if I press the key of uh, C1, it's the kick drum, so that's rooted to insert A, and the snare drum, which we earlier set to B, when I trigger the, the uh, snare drum, it's root, changed the routing to insert B. So if I uh, now play the hi-hat, that's also routed through to A. So let's imagine we want to put a compressor on all the drum sounds, but we want to do something slightly different with the snare drum. So the uh, effects can be selected here. So I'm going to call up a uh, compressor and I can call up the VCM compressor and call up a preset from here. So I'm going to go a 60s drum kit. So basically now the, uh, the kick drum and the hi-hats, everything is being routed through as you can see, if you follow the signal chain through A. But you'll notice as well that it's then feeding into B and going straight out. So we need to change the, uh, the assignment of the, of the routing itself. So let's go ahead and set up the snare. Let's put a, a, a um, delay effect on the snare just to, so we can, it's nice and clear to see what's going on. And now when I press the snare, you'll hear we've got a tempo cross delay going on the snare. That's fine. However, when we press the kick, we're hearing that delay on the kick as well. And that's because the signal is being routed through from insert A to insert B. So what we need to do is adjust the routing if we want the uh, delays to only be on the snare. And to adjust the routing, we go to insert connect and we want parallel processing. So it's going to send anything, uh, the kick drum is going to be routed through insert A and then out through the EQ and into the reverb sense. And, uh, B likewise isn't uh, is if I press the snare drum, you'll hear that that's the echo, but it doesn't run run it through the compressor. So we've got a choice as to how we route the uh, the insert effects, which is quite uh, quite handy to have two totally independent insert effects. Another nice feature is that the inserts have their own reverb send level. So if you look at there's a reverb send level of twelve, but you can set a level for the inserts uh, to, to, for their own. Uh, reverb send. So I'm hitting that uh, kick drum and if I dial up the dial it up you'll see that that's now being routed to the reverb. So you can control the levels that are routed through to the uh, from via the inserts to the reverb send as well independent of the reverb send level. Finally you can choose where this particular part is routed. At the moment it's routed to the uh, main left and right outputs. If you want to you can select that and route the, uh, this particular part to USB output 1 and 2. But for now I'm just going to leave it on the main output. So you can route it independently of other parts in the arrangement if you so wish. 
Now, I'd like to stress the importance of being organised when you import your own samples into the Modi X. Only import the samples you actually need. If you recall, I selected bass drum one uh, before selecting finally bass drum number two, and I sel selected snare drum one before opting for snare drum number two. Now, those samples are still loaded in memory, and I'll show you how we can remove them from memory. But uh, if you uh, are organized beforehand and simply copy across the, only the files that you actually need, rather than, say, uh, several hundred snare drums uh, samples, you'll find it much more easy to stay organized at a later stage, and I'll show you how to do that now. So in order to check on the samples that we've imported, we need to select the utility button on the front panel of the Modi X. Uh, then we want to uh, go to uh, go to contents. And then finally, we want to go to data utility. Now this shows you the uh, data inside the Modi X. So we can actually go and look at uh, performances, uh, songs that are stored, any libraries and live sets. I'm going to cover the uh, loading and saving and uh, the different the difference between uh, say a library and a user bank in a later video but let's the bit that interests us now is the waveform and you'll see there's bass drum one bass drum two closed hi-hat and where are the snare drum snare drum one snare drum two there we are. Now, the other thing to, the, there's something else that's, that's worth noting and another reason that it's good to be organized is um, if I, bear in mind, as I say, this is on OS version 1.1, but if I now go to input, let's import another sample into, um, and I'm going to make a, a deliberate mistake. So let's uh, select drum key and we want to import something to uh, C4. C um, if we go to new waveform and we select a waveform that's already in memory it will still load that regardless so now when i go back to that utility mode so i hit utility and i go to data utility and select waveforms you'll see that there are, are two bass drum number ones in memory uh, so it doesn't differentiate it doesn't and uh, know that you've actually already loaded one into memory. The other thing that would be really nice when we're importing sounds is to be able to uh, to preview them. Now, I haven't found a way how to do that. It would also be good to import multiple samples at the same time. You can delete multiple samples, but I haven't found a way of, uh, of importing multiple samples yet. So to delete multiple samples, we select Job, and then you, the uh, little tick boxes appear. So we know we want to delete bass drum number one twice, and we want to delete snare drum number one. So if we're happy with that, we literally uh, select delete, agree to that, and it's tidied up the samples that are inside the memory. If you're doing this lots of times and you've got several drum kits, you're, you're going to want to to keep on top of these samples that are in there. So I suggest you, you do have an organized structure. So let's save away the uh, performance we've created. I've taken the echo off the snare drum. So uh, that's being routed uh, through the compressor as are all the other sounds. And uh, let's save it away. So in order to do that, we hit the store button on the uh, right of the Modi X and we need to store a new performance and we need to give it a name. So let's just call it uh, My Drums. Obviously, could give it a name that you can easily remember later, preferably one that will work in the search utility. And uh, that is now saved away. So now it's quite safe to remove the USB stick. All the samples are stored inside the Modi X. They will su uh, survive powering down. So if, you, uh, if you're going off to a gig, those sounds are safely stored away. Um, if you're calling, coming back and uh, working on the track again in six months' time, those sounds are still stored inside the Modi X. Uh, again, another little word of warning. If you were to delete that performance, my drums, the samples will still be on board, so you'd have to go in and delete, remember to delete the samples as well. There may well be, as I say, in future versions, a way of deleting the samples that are associated with each uh, performance, but for now you're going to have to be organised. So in order to check that we've mapped everything correctly, let's call up a standard drum beat that's mapped to a general MIDI. Uh, I'm going to use Halion Sonic again. We'll use the same pattern we used before. Drag that across. Now to extend the patterns, go to the bottom right hand corner and that will basically extend it. Um, but it's not an extension we want. We want to copy the individual uh, pattern multiple times. And if I select the glue icon, we can glue those together. like so, 
and let's check it back on the Modi X. So as you heard in that example, the closed hi-hat was choking off the open hi-hat and everything was playing back correctly. So really that completes this section. However, there is an alternative method of creating a drum performance. The main method I've just shown you will work fine in most cases. However, there might be times when you want to do something a bit more experimental. You might want an 808 style bass and say stretch it over an octave, or you might want to apply filter envelopes or LFOs to your samples. So to make this guide complete, I'll very quickly show you that second method. Let's go category search and select initialize, but instead of selecting initialize drum, we'll just select initialize normal. Now this requires even more organization, so it's not for the faint hearted, but if you want to try something, uh, say, adventurous in the synthetic world, this is the way to do it. So let's uh, go in and edit the, uh, the approach. Now you'll see everything is labeled element one to eight rather than uh, than, the, than the drum names. And this is what puzzled me in an earlier video when I was uh, trying to dissect various drum kits and work out what was going on. So in order to uh, narrow this down so that it works with one key, we need to select uh, note limits. So I'm gonna select keyboard and hit the key of C1 as being the lower note and uh, C1 for being the higher note because we only want to um, trigger one sound. So. You'll see that every single note is, is assigned to um, to a piano sound. So what we want to do now is call up a drum sound. So if I select and go to category search, I'm just going to use an internal um, waveform for this particular example because it's to show you the synthesis side of things. I'm going to go to drum percussion, select symbol and crash. So I'll hit enter. And now on the key of C1, we have a cymbal sample. Now at the moment it sounds more like a gong. That's because everything is based around a centre key of C3 and we're actually playing the note of C1. So we need to transpose the course tuning up 24 semitones, which is two octaves, to, and now that will sound correctly. So now that's at the correct pitch, let's show you some of the extra uh, editing that you don't get using the drum uh, method that I showed you earlier. First of all, you get a pitch envelope generator. So you might want to do something exotic with a pitch. So if we look at the uh, envelope generator, you'll see it's at the moment it's having no effect. If I adjust the attack level, not the time, but the level, you'll see it's pitching the sound up and then back down again. Now, similarly, if I go to the decay two value and decay one rather value and You'll see it's taking the pitch up, down, and then back up again to the, the center line. Now, Yamaha envelopes work this way. You've got, not only do you have the traditional attack, decay, and release times, but you have um, levels. Now, if you think about on a traditional synthesizer, sustain is actually a level. It's not a time. It doesn't depend on time like the attack value does, the decay value does, or the release value does. So. Each value, attack, decay one, decay two, and release has a level. And consequently, that's what I'm adjusting to give us the effects of the pitch envelope generator. Now the filter's also a little bit more uh, versatile than in the, uh, in the drum method. So let's call up um, an analog style 24 pass, uh, 24 uh, pole rather, filter and adjust the cutoff. To about there and adjust the resonance up. Watch your ears because it can get quite quite sharp. Now that's not much use but you can now, now assign an envelope to it. So let's adjust the attack time. So you can hear the uh, the effect of the uh, of the uh, filter opening and closing by using the filter envelope generator. Um, we can similarly do the same, similar to with amplitude, but with a little bit more control than you can with the drum samples. But we also have LFOs, so we can assign an LFO. Let's uh, take a sawtooth waveform, and we're going to assign that to the uh, modulate the pitch. So let's whack that up to full. So you can hear that affecting the pitch. Um, if I take it back down to zero, you can have. Um, we can also have filter modulation. So that's opening and closing the filter in a sawtooth pattern as well. 
uh, you've also got uh, the EQ setting that you had before. So if you want to be a little bit more adventurous, that's how to uh, how to employ the synthesis facilities a little bit more in depth on the Modi X. Not quite as friendly, takes a little bit more thinking about it. So let's imagine now we want to take that, uh, say, 808 bass, tuned bass style um, across, say, an octave range of the keyboard. Now, the first thing you need to do is to switch the second element on because they will all default to the off position. Uh, it only, only element one is defaults to on. So we'll go, we'll select element two. We'll switch that on. And we want to select the note limit, so we'll leave it going from C minus two. Let's uh, set it to by pressing the keyboard up to C four. So I'll switch keyboard off, and now we've set the note range from C two to C four. And you'll see that at the moment it's that piano sound. Now the 808 style bass was saved away. If you recall the earlier video, it was saved away as T eight bass. So let's go to um, Let's go to category search and we'll look for drum and percussion and we want the, uh, the kick drum, but we want to look for uh, sounds with T8 in the name. So let's go to T8 and we'll do a search. So there we are, T8 kick bass. Uh, let's, let's try assigning that. That's the waveform, it's in the wrong pitch, of course, and kick bass. That has a softer attack time. I'm going to go for that one and hit enter. Now that has now assigned that sound across the keyboard range that is displayed there from C2 to C, C minus two rather to C4. So uh, let's now uh, adjust the pitch. We need to take that down because it's uh, significantly lower than that. Let's take it down uh, two octaves and see how that sounds. That sounds more like it. So we have our weird and wonderful uh, cymbal sound assigned to uh, the lower C key, and we have the 808 style bass assigned to a variety of keys from uh, two octaves below, uh, from C minus two to C four. So that almost brings this video to a close. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already, and make sure you select the bell icon to be notified of new releases. If you found the video helpful, then you'd help me by giving me a thumbs up. And if you didn't like the video, then please make sure you hit the thumbs down button twice. So for now, thanks for watching.